Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here for our product webinar today, the VSPP1 Nanostructured Material Printer, the ultimate tool for material development. My name is Andrei Ilinka. I am content creator for VS Particle, and I will be your host for today's session. Important to mention that this webinar is a new version of our previous demo webinar with an improved image quality, new product features updates, and an in-depth experiment performed during the virtual demonstration part, which brings me to the format that we have chosen for today's session. We thought that the best way to get this across to you is through a combination of a classical webinar presentation and a virtual lab experience. Presenting the ins and the outs of the technology is our VSP application specialist and my colleague, Wilbert Vreiburg. And performing the virtual lab demonstration and experiment is our product engineer and our colleague, Sofia Dimitriadu. Before we dive deep into the topic, I would like uh, to quickly walk you through today's agenda. We will discuss handing questions during the presentation, webinar recording. I will then give you some information of ways you can uh, request additional information. I will provide you with a short VS Particle introduction for those who are not yet familiarized with what we do. And then we will give the floor to Wilbert and to Sophia. The last part of the session is in charge with answering questions. We are taking questions during the webinar and we will try to answer all of them after the presentation has ended. However, for the questions that remained unanswered, we will follow up with the email in the coming days. You can find the chat room in your bottom right corner, the icon with the question mark. Please don't forget that you are on mute during the session and you won't be able to speak. So any comments you might have or questions, please address them in the chat box. The webinar session will be recorded and we will send you a link in the coming days so you can share it with your colleagues or watch it later. There are multiple ways in which you can get in contact with us. If you would like to know more about VS Particle solutions and how, can, and how they can help in your specific area of research, you can check our application notes, www.vsparticle.com slash applications. Or if you would like to uh, try the technology in the safety of your own lab, you can do freely so via a form available at www.vsparticle.com or through email demo at vsparticle.com. For any other inquiries, please always contact our sales department, sales at vsparticle.com. We are a spin-off company of TU Delft, located in the Netherlands, with over 20 years of experience in the synthesis of aerosols, and with a passionate team of uh, engineers and researchers, VS Particle is unlocking a whole new world of possibilities at the nanoscale. We develop and commercialize completely new technology to automate the production of new materials. And we are key nanotechnology providers in different industries like catalysis, semicon, and health. Since 2014, we have helped scientists and industry leaders across the world to drastically reduce the development time of new materials and products by enabling automated nanoparticle production. And here you can see a layout of our current product portfolio. Thank you for being here with me through this short introduction. I will now hand off the presentation to my colleagues, Wilbert and Sophia, who will take you through the backbone of our technology. And I will see you at the end of the session when we will take your questions and answer them. Thank you so much. Enjoy the presentation and see you in a bit. Wilbert, you have the floor. Thank you, Andrea, for the kind introduction. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's pre-recorded webinar. My name is Wolbert Freiberg, and I'm an application specialist at VS Particle. Today, I'd like to discuss the latest and most advanced product in VS Particle's product portfolio, namely the VSP P1 Nanostructure Material Printer, which we'll be launching later this year. This latest product enables researchers to accurately print nanostructure materials on diverse substrates for wide ranging applications. So first, I'd like to give a quick outline on how the remainder of the presentation is going to unfold. To begin with, I'll discuss the VSP G1 nanoparticle generator, which is really the product that's at the heart of all of VS Particle's technology. 
and is needed to prepare the nanoparticles before they're deposited on various substrates. Next, I'll discuss the VSP P1 nanostructure material printer. In this section, I'll first give some background about the printer itself and some key applications in which uh, the printer can be employed. Finally, we'll have a virtual lab tour uh, provided by my colleague Sophia, in which she will prepare a simple sample using the VSP P1 nanostructure material printer. So first, the VSP G1 nanoparticle generator. Our VSP G1 nanoparticle generator uses spark ablation to prepare its nanoparticles. The ingredients that you need for this are electrodes that are at least conductive or semiconductive in nature. An inert gas is required, so either argon or nitrogen. You need electricity and the entire procedure operates at room temperature. So within this procedure, a voltage is applied between these two electrodes. This leads to a spark being generated, and this spark ablates or evaporates a small amount of material from the surface of these electrodes. Now, this leads to a vapor being generated, and this vapor then sinters to form larger atomic clusters. Uh, these then sinter to form larger primary particles, and these can then aggregate or agglomerate to larger particles. So in general, your input are uh, the electrodes and electricity and the inert gas. And your output are clean, pure, ligand-free nanoparticles with a primary particle size below 20 nanometers. You can um, aggregate these particles to form larger particles. And overall, the ablation rate is within the rate of uh, milligrams per hour. But this is really dependent on the element that you're using. To give a better illustration on our nanoparticle generator in action, uh, we have a user here on the left standing behind the nanoparticle generator. So on the left, we have the gas inlet. There's the reactor head in the middle, and we have our gas outlet on the right. Uh, if we zoom into the reactor head itself, what we see here are the two electrodes in between which the spark is generated, which then forms the vapor, and then this vapor uh, sinters to form larger primary particles. Um, and these then aggregate to form uh, aggregates and agglomerates. And what's unique about our nanoparticle generating method is that we can vary the particle size by varying the residence time of the uh, nanomaterial inside the reactor head. So by increasing the gas flow, we shorten the residence time. And in doing so, we prepare smaller nanoparticles and vice versa. So the material composition um, is controlled by the electrode configuration within the VSP G1 nanoparticle generator. If we look to the left of the solid green line here, uh, we see the types of materials that you can expect to prepare using a single uh, nanoparticle generator. So if you use electrodes of equal material, you can expect to prepare um, monometallic nanoparticles. Um, you can prepare alloys by mixing and matching uh, electrodes of different elements. Um, so this is quite a, um, a rough way of preparing alloys. Um, and what you get is a composition of um, or a distribution of nanoparticles with elemental compositions that range between the two extremes. Uh, a more accurate way to prepare uh, alloyed nanoparticles is by pre-alloying or pre-sintering your electrodes. Um, and the composition of the nanoparticles that you then prepare is similar to the electrodes that you are using. Uh, to the right of the solid green line, you can see that uh, additional material flexibility is introduced by adding a second nanoparticle generator. Uh, and then the configuration in which these two nanoparticle generators are connected uh, leads to uh, different types of materials that you can prepare. So if you um, uh, employ sequential deposition, you can prepare layered uh, nanomaterials. Uh, by mixing the two streams in series, you can prepare uh, core shell type structures or decorated nanoparticles. Um, and by mixing the two streams in parallel, you can again form some uh, form of mixed uh, nanomaterial. Uh, our VSP G1 nanoparticle generator is uh, compatible with a wide range of elements. Uh, the requirements that you have are that the element needs to be at least semiconductive 
and it needs to be able to be shaped into an electrode that's then compatible with our uh, nanoparticle generator. So if you're interested in uh, a wide range of uh, uh, materials, just get into contact with us uh, and we can see how compatible it is with our nanoparticle generator. Here I show you what one of our end caps looks like with a, a single electrode placed into the end. Uh, the electrode essentially just clicks into our end cap, which makes it very easy to uh, install and use. We have a number of different deposition methods uh, that we uh, employ to uh, collect our nanoparticles. We have diffusion, filtration and impaction. And these three um, are achieved using our VSP A series deposition accessories. I covered some of these in a previous webinar. So if you're interested in learning more about these, uh, feel free to look at some of our previous webinars uh, via our website or YouTube. Um, but today we're really going to be discussing uh, printing, which is achieved using the VSP P1 nanostructured material printer. So now we've moved on to the VSP P1 nanostructure material printer. I'd like to give you some background about our printer and uh, key applications that we see our printer being employed in. Here we see what our VSP P1 nanostructure material printer looks like in the rough. Uh, so on the left here, we have our uh, VSP G1 nanoparticle generator. Here we uh, generate our nanoparticles that are then uh, transferred over to our VSP P1 nanostructure material printer. Uh, there's a nozzle inside the chamber, um, and this nozzle then hovers above a substrate holder, and the substrate holder is on an XYZ stage, which then moves and allows us to pattern our uh, substrates. The output of the VSP P1 is a nanoporous layer. Uh, using the XYZ stage, we can then uh, pattern this layer, layer onto a wide range of substrates. Um, and what I show you here are uh, two different layers that we prepared, uh, a copper oxide layer um, at the top and a uh, gold nanoporous uh, layer at the bottom. The deposition mechanism that's used in our printer is based on uh, inertial impaction. Uh, using inertial impaction, the particles in the nano aerosol can be locally deposited at room temperature and under rough vacuum. Uh, some of the key deposition parameters uh, that I would like to highlight are that we can vary the spot size of our um, printer. Uh, and this ranges between 0 0.01 and 1 centimeter. Um, we have a position accuracy uh, in the XYZ stage of 10 micrometers. Um, and the XYZ stage allows us to print uh, various patterns on a wide range of substrates. By varying the uh, deposition time, we can also vary the layer thickness. Uh, and this can then be from a very thin layer to uh, much thicker uh, uh, micrometer uh, sized layers. Uh, the substrates that we're compatible with are a substrate with a maximum size of 20 by 20 centimeters. And we've printed on uh, MEMS devices, we've uh, printed SIR substrates, we've printed on 6 inch wafers, and we can print on flexible polymers. So what makes VS Particle's printing technology so unique? Well, at VS Particle, we have developed a deposition technology that combines the advantages of additive manufacturing with the purity of thin film deposition into a single concept to realize a nanostructure material for a wide range of microfabrication applications. Uh, clear advantages that we have over techniques such as physical vapor deposition are that our approach does not require a mask as we can control the local deposition using the VSP P1 by adjusting the nozzle size and the position using the XYZ stage. Uh, when compared with inkjet printing, our nanoparticle generation method uh, takes place in the gas phase. Uh, this means that we don't have any wet chemical waste and we no longer require any post-processing steps. Uh, what I show you here is the deposition of uh, our nanoparticles on a contact lens, which is uh, a flexible polymer. Uh, what we see here is that we have uh, our gold deposited on uh, the contact lens and we're able to achieve a, uh, um, a line thickness of 100 micrometers. Uh, and if we zoom in even further, we see that this is indeed a continuous 
uh, nanoporous film that we've deposited onto this contact lens. There are several markets in which we see the VSP P1 adding value, including uh, sensor development, healthcare, material screening, and microreactor development. And in the uh, next few slides, I just want to cover a few application examples uh, that we have in which the VSP P1 nanostructure material printer has been used. The first example that I would like to discuss is the preparation of substrates for surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. Um, or SIRS. Uh, SIRS is a molecular detection and characterization technique, um, and it uses gold or silver to amplify the Raman signal of a particular molecule. So what we are able to do with our uh, VSP P1 nanostructure material printer is first we prepare the uh, nanoparticles in the spark, and these are then deposited directly onto a, a substrate to then uh, obtain a, uh, a nanoporous film of gold and silver. Um, this can be done quite rapidly, uh, and this is achieved because we have a solvent-free uh, film printing uh, technology. Um, our approach is readily adjustable, so we can vary the particle size of the nanoparticles that are then deposited onto the different substrates. Uh, we can also vary the thickness of the layer that's printed, um, and we can also uh, uh, print different patterns. Um, and our technology also allows us then to print a large number of substrates in a single uh, run, uh, which you can see below here, uh, where we have a substrate holder with um, a large number of uh, SIRS substrates that have been printed. Uh, we're very flexible when it comes to the types of substrates that we can print on, um, and we've printed on silicon, glass, and paper as well. Um, we achieve excellent Raman signal amplification. Uh, we're able to uh, detect uh, certain molecules down to the PPB level. Um, and because of how flexible our uh, preparation technique is, uh, we can extend this method to other metals. Um, and this was recently done in a publication in which copper was used um, uh, to prepare SIR substrates. The second application that I would like to share is the um, development of metal oxide gas sensors. Um, what we show here is that we can locally deposit our gas phase metal oxide nanoparticles directly onto a sensor chip. Um, and this can allow us to easily prepare gas sensors without the use of inks or any post-processing uh, steps. Um, a recent publication that came out uh, also demonstrated how spark ablation could be used uh, to prepare highly sensitive, selective, and stable tungsten oxide-based uh, sensors for uh, NO2 detection. Um, and they attributed uh, the remarkable performance of these um, metal oxide sensors to the large surface area of the thin films that were composed of high purity nanoparticle building blocks. The final application that I would like to discuss is um, falls into the category of material screening. Uh, this was a study that was done in collaboration with uh, Avantium, which is a company based in the Netherlands that specializes in uh, studying and screening uh, catalysts in high throughput. So this was an electrocatalyst screening study uh, in which they sought to study uh, nickel iron based oxygen evolution reaction electrocatalysts in high throughput. So what they prepared at Avantium was an eight by eight uh, cell, which I show here. Um, and this cell would then be uh, placed into a gasket, which would then be placed into an electrochemical cell. Um, and this uh, cell contains 64 electrodes uh, that then needed to be uh, uh, decorated with uh, different compositions of nickel and iron. So the wafer uh, that was developed by Avantium was placed inside the uh, VSP P1 nanostructure material printer. And the printer itself was then connected to two VSP G1 uh, nanoparticle generators. Uh, the first was equipped with nickel electrodes, um, and the second one was equipped with uh, iron electrodes. Um, and what we could do was we could vary the elemental composition by varying the power output between the two nanoparticle generators. Um, and we could also vary the layer thickness by varying the uh, deposition time um, uh, on each of the uh, of the electrodes. Uh, what you see here on the right is a 3D plot. Uh, um, and just to summarize, what we were able to do was we could screen 
a wide range of nickel iron based electrocatalysts with varying composition and layer thickness uh, for their performance in the oxygen evolution reaction. So to summarize, our printer has an adjustable spot size with a high position accuracy. Using the XYZ stage, we can print delicate patterns and our technology is compatible with a wide range of substrates. If you have any sales inquiries, please contact us at sales at vsparticle.com. And if you would like to request a demo, uh, please visit our website at vsparticle.com forward slash demo or email us directly at demo at vsparticle.com. So I hope that this presentation has given you sufficient background on how our VSP P1 nanostructured material printer works and the types of applications you can expect to uh, use it in. Uh, this brings us to the next stage of our webinar in which my colleague Sophia will take you to our virtual lab and showcase the VSP P1 nanostructure material printer in action. Hello everyone, welcome to our lab and thank you for joining this virtual demonstration of our new product, the VSP P1 nanostructured material printer. My name is Sofia Dimitriadou, and today I'm here to guide you through this virtual experiment that we're going to do, so that hopefully you will have a hands-on experience of how uh, our new printer works. Um, the experiment we're going to do will start from the nanoarzole synthesis, and it will end with the deposition of the produced nanoparticles to this chamber that you see here. So are you ready to get started? Then let's go. So now uh, we are ready to start. We're going to do a very simple deposition with silver on a simple glass substrate, just for the sake of this demonstration today. So here you can see uh, the whole setup. This is the setup that we use in the lab. Of course, the commercial product uh, will, be, will have a different casing, but they will be exactly the same components. So here you can see the basis of all of our systems. So this is the VSP G1 nanoparticle generator. And this, which is the reactor head, is where the nanoparticle production takes place with the technology called spark ablation. In principle, you can connect as many G1s as you want in this setup. So we could also have a, a second G1 here in case we wanted to work with more than one materials. And this is one of our biggest advantages that you can actually combine a lot of different nanoparticle sources for this um, printer. And here, of course, is uh, the deposition chamber. Uh, here we have a rough vacuum. Uh, depending on the nozzle, of course, uh, but it, it is 0 0.1 millibar uh, approximately. And with this uh, nozzle that we will insert and the substrate holder, we will uh, begin the deposition later on. So, but the first step to do that is to insert the desired material into our reactor chamber, so into our VSP G1. To do that, I'm going to remove these safety mounting pins. It will not take that long, especially after you get used to the equipment. Then we take our basic uh, wrenches, 14 uh, millimeter wrenches, and we disconnect here. This part is a little bit tricky because it's connected to these lines here that are fixed. And we also need to do the same from this side. So, after we've disconnected in these two parts, we will slightly move this back, this reactor head. And we will move to a flat surface in order to be able to load uh, our electrodes. So, as I mentioned, now that we have removed our reactor head from the VSP base unit, we find a flat surface, ideally within a fume hood. And all we need to do is insert the electrode of the desired material that we want to use for our experiment. There are different kinds of materials that we can use. Essentially, the only requirement is that the material needs to be either conductive or semiconductive. And that's because the technology is spark ablation, so we need to have some power coming through the material. So, I remove the clamps and very carefully remove also the end caps. And now, I'm going to use this alignment tool, which will help me for the mounting of the reactor head back to the equipment. Just place this here. I'm going to take my electrodes. As you can hear, 
they have a mounting base here. So they just click very easily. And then you can take the clamps back, use the support of the alignment tool, and do this also for the other side. Take this slide and use the clamp. So now we are ready to uh, mount this on the VSP G1 base unit and continue with our experiment. Now that we've placed our electrodes inside the reactor head, we need to move the reactor head back to the base unit. We check the side of the motor, which is this one, and we make sure that it is at the right place on the base unit. So. And you need to push slightly until it clicks. Then we will adjust again the position of the equipment. And we will insert this fixed tubing to its right position. Okay. Now we will do the same with the gas inlet that we had coming from here. So this is our inert gas. And we need to connect this to the outlet, so the other side of the G1. This is the two openings that we saw before at the demonstration at the flat surface. So this was the first opening and this is the other side. It doesn't really matter which side you choose to be which. And then of course, we need the mounting pins for safety reasons. Okay, so. If you see that the mounting pins can be easily inserted, that means that the alignment that we did before with the tool is proper. Otherwise, if not, you need to uh, take it out again and try to reinsert the electrodes properly. At the back of the G1, uh, there is a button, a turn on button. So we turn the G1 on. Uh, you will get a message here that says booting. And then uh, there's the message begin electrode alignment, which we choose Okay, this noise now is because the electrodes are moving, trying to find the minimum and maximum distance between the two. Uh, so this is part of the, the process. And you also see here the checking P1 and P0 um, commands on the screen. If everything is okay, we will soon get uh, a screen uh, that we are ready to spark. And uh, here now that you can see the settings and the message ready to spark, it means that we are perfectly okay and set to start our deposition. So moving on to the preparation of our substrate, it is actually very easy and short. Uh, we will use uh, this uh, substrate holder here that you can see. This can be used with multiple samples. At the moment, uh, it's not very visible to the camera probably, but we have a lot of uh, glass plates, simple glass that we will use for the, the purposes of this uh, demonstration. So you insert your samples here. Uh, alternatively, uh, we could use a smaller uh, tray like this, where we stabilize our desired substrate with uh, carbon tape, for example, or whatever other material you want to use. So since our substrate tray is uh, ready to be used, we're going to also prepare the nozzle. Uh, this is a very important aspect of our printer. At the moment, we can use three different nozzle sizes. We're going to choose the smaller one. So it is very simple. You take uh, your nozzle, uh, you put it inside, and then you also insert the rubber on top. And now we are ready to print. So I'm going to take both of them and go to, print, to insert them in the chamber. So now that uh, we have decided on our substrates, uh, the only thing that is left to do is to actually place the substrate and the nozzle within the chamber. So I'm just going to place my substrate holder here and my nozzle. We are going to open those three valves. So open the chamber completely. We take our substrate holder and we need to slide it in. Perfect. And then we secure using uh, this screw here. 
doesn't need to be very tight. Then we take uh, this nozzle that we picked uh, before and we insert it here and also tight accordingly. Okay, it also needs to be um, quite tight. So we need to make sure of that. And then we are ready. We can close the chamber, secure the three valves like this. And we are basically ready to go to the computer and start our experiment. So now that uh, we've placed the substrate inside, I just very briefly want to mention that in principle you can use any substrate that you want. There is no requirement. The only requirement is that your substrate uh, can hold a, va a vacuum of approximately 0.1 millibar. Uh, we have our, our glass and you can see here that this is a very simple interface that we use to control the experimental settings. So here, uh, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but in this area here, uh, we see the camera from inside the, the chamber and we use this in order to find the starting point for our deposition. So I'm gonna slightly move um, and place uh, my center here, which is the center of a glass in there, so that I'm sure that my deposition will start at the correct place. So now that we have uh, set our starting point using the camera, we can very easily set all the parameters of our experiment and get going. Um, I will just start with the flow. So you can start your flow here and you can check always that you've reached the desired point uh, from this window here. Uh, and I will not go into the details with all the experimental parameters at the moment. I'm just going to say the order of them, which is we turn on the flow. We select the power for the G1, uh, so this one, the power settings that we want to use that will determine our nanoparticle size and the amount of material that we will get on our substrate. So we also set our parameters here. We turn the spark on, which will make uh, some noise. That is why I will not uh, do it right now before I finish my explanation. Uh, and then we can move on to turning on the pump and the bypass flow here. After we have done all that, we just uh, press a button and automatically after we have selected our desired uh, script for the patterning that we want to do, we can start our deposition. So, now the deposition is over, there was a little bit of editing because uh, the deposition lasted in total five minutes. We tried uh, three different depositions and after also following an automated uh, flashing protocol, which lasts again 10 to 15 minutes uh, and it's for safety uh, reasons, mainly uh, in terms of nanoparticle safety. So now we can open our chamber again. And we can take out our substrate holder. So again, uh, using the screw to loosen it up and sliding it out. And uh, here is uh, the end result that we printed. I would like to mention at this point an overview of the whole experiment that we did. So in terms of preparation and warming up of the equipment, it is required that you have approximately 30 minutes. Uh, then you place your substrate in and you run a script for the desired patterning that you want to do. Uh, depending, of course, on what you want to deposit. Uh, a deposition similar to what I will show you right now requires approximately five minutes. Uh, and finally, the flushing ending protocol, which is again automated, requires approximately 10 to 15 minutes. So, uh, we will end with a close-up of the deposited pattern, but thank you very much for your attention and for joining me for this virtual experiment. Thank you, Sophia, for the very informative virtual lab demonstration. And thank you, everyone, for attending BS Particles webinar on the BSP P1 nanostructure material printer. Um, again, if you have any sales inquiries, please don't hesitate to contact us at sales at vsparticle.com. And if you would like to demonstrate our technology uh, in your own labs, uh, please visit our website and go to vsparticle.com forward slash demo to request a demo or email us directly at demo at vsparticle.com.
I would like to thank both my colleagues, Robert and Sophia. We are going now to the last phase of our webinar, which is answering your questions. Uh, my colleague, Sophia, is already in the lab. I hope you can see her. I can see her. I guess you also can. Uh, hello, Sophia. Hi, Andrea. Thank you for hosting this session. Uh, we will now move on to the question. I will read them and you will answer. Uh, first question, uh, Enza Panzardi would like to know if it's possible to print on alumina substrate and if it's possible to print part of an electrode in a material and the other part with another material, for example, platinum and silver. Uh, so for the first part of the question, yes, of course, as I mentioned, if the substrate is not destroyed with a vacuum of 0 0.10.2 millibar, then you can use it. There is no restriction. Um, and then for the second part, I, I didn't hear it uh, correctly. If you, you mentioned that you can deposit two different materials, one part silver, one part platinum. Yes, correct. Uh, yes, of course, you can do that. First of all, you can do uh, separate runs. So first deposit the platinum uh, side and then uh, silver side. And we have a 10 uh, micron position accuracy. So you can, of course, uh, do separate depositions. Okay. What about the design of the electrodes you need? I mean, do you need a CAD file or other? Um, so basically, uh, we provide the service of providing the electrodes to our customers if they want to, but we also provide the designs uh, in case they want to source them elsewhere. So um, I'm not sure if you, if you want to, to have a CAD design for your production uh, method that you want to use, but we do provide uh, a design uh, for you to use in case you want to manufacture your own electrodes. All right, thank you. Moving on. How can you control the amount of deposited material? Okay, so this is actually a very interested, uh, interesting question. Uh, you can vary the amount of deposited material uh, with two ways, I would say. One of them, the most straightforward, is the speed. Um, so if you use, and the deposition time, consequently. So uh, if you use a higher speed, of course, you get uh, less material. And then if you use a lower speed, you get the longer deposition time and more material deposited on your substrate. But you can also vary the power of the G1 that you use. So, of course, higher power leads to higher ablation material. And then you also get, in principle, uh, more material on your substrate. Uh, the most straightforward uh, way to go for this is, as I mentioned, uh, the speed, though. OK. How do you control the spot size? Spot size. Uh, this is uh, through the distance of the nozzle to the substrate. Uh, so you can vary this distance automatically, and that way you can uh, vary your spot size. Again, uh, the speed uh, also plays a role uh, in the spot size that you achieve. So you need to find a balance between the two for your desired uh, spot size. Is that the typical gas flow you use? Can you explain how you can prepare metal oxides? Um, so uh, the typical gas flow that we used, for example, for this experiment was one uh, liter per minute. Uh, in principle, we can use with our G1 system uh, one to 25 liters per minute. However, if you use a very small nozzle, um, there might be a restriction uh, there. Uh, so, in case you want to prepare metal oxides to go to the second part of the question, um, we have done this. Uh, you just need to use a small amount of oxygen uh, in the gas flow. In principle, you can also use different uh, gases uh, in your inner gas flow, uh, but also, also you need to consult with us first uh, for safety reasons, but it is possible. All right, and now moving on to the last question of our session today. You mentioned that you control the patterning with a script. Can you please elaborate on this? Yes. Uh, so in the commercial product, we will have um, an automated option for some basic uh, shapes and patterns, let's say squares or circles. But uh, there will also be the option uh, by using a simple programming language uh, to, to make your own uh, modifying patterns, if that is what you wish. Uh, more information uh, with that uh, can be sent in case uh, you want to purchase the, the final product. All right. Thank you so much, Sophia, Thank for you. providing these answers. 
And I would like also to thank our audiences for being here today with us and to invite them in our uh, future uh, virtual endeavors. Uh, I wish everyone a good day and I hope to see all of you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.